Hi guys, good evening. Good evening to all. Uh, so this will be the two half a day session on AZ-104 certification. So we have divided it into two parts. So first half will be from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. today. And the second half will be tomorrow at the same time. Also, we will wait for more five, 10 minutes for other participants to join as the participants are still getting in. So we'll wait for more five to 10 minutes. Okay, so those who have connected just now, please note, we'll wait for more five minutes, I guess, yeah, as the participants are still getting in. I can see more participants are joining. So till the time I have shared the uh, social media platform links, so go check it out. You can just follow us to get the relevant updates on the workshop and trainings we do. I have shared the links in the chat box for our social media platforms.
OK, so we will start with the session. So welcome you all in this advanced role based certification session. So we have divided it into two parts. So first half will be today. That is on 15th Feb today from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And the second half will be tomorrow again from 4 p.m. to uh, 8 p.m. Then as you all know, uh, uh, today's event sponsor is Synergetics. So talking about Synergetics, so Synergetics is India's one of a, a corporate learning solution company uh, which help indus any industry to get the relevant technological solution. We have many uh, solutions as you can see on the screen. We have onboarding solution, then we have rescaling solution, certification solution so az104 comes under certification solution then we have certification plus add-on then the cloud adoption architecting then we have practice playbook latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution now the today's uh, uh, event is organized by ATC community, that is Azure Tech community. Our ATC community is open to all those who have interested in cloud technologies. So we have some of the meetup communities where you can follow us to get the updates on the upcoming workshop. So first we have the emerging technology community for all. Then we have emerging technology community specifically for Surat. Then we have Azure Tech community Pune for Pune Kurs. And Azure Tech community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs. So you just have to uh, download the meetup app on your phone or on your device. And you just have to follow our communities. I will be sharing the links for this community in the chat box. So you can just go and follow us over there to get the updates on the workshop and webinar we do. Then we have small code of conduct. As you all know, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and you cannot do the screen recording. While the speaker is presenting. As uh, we will be sharing this uh, recording on our YouTube channel, so you can go and subscribe to a YouTube channel. Again, I will share the YouTube channel link, the official YouTube channel link in the chat box later. Then the speaker for this webinar is Mr. Makran Boyer. So he will taking the AZ104. So he's an MCT, that is Microsoft Certified Trainer and currently working as a training consultant in Synergetics. Then the session agenda. So Makran sir will make you understand all about the EZ104 in depth ahead in the session. Then as you all know, we are providing the discounted rate exam voucher for EZ104. So if you want, you can purchase it from us at discounted rate that is for 3200 as it actual price is 4800, but we are providing it to you all at 3200. Also, we have at, uh, other advanced role based uh, certifications as well as the exam vouchers at discounted rate. So if you want to connect for that, you can just connect me on my given email ID and I will just put all the details in the chat box for you all. Also note, once you purchase the exam voucher from us, you will get this certification in the particular course, as you can see. So we will get this badge from our side. These are the titles for specifically for fundamental and expert level and associate. Then this is the learning achievement batch. For this, you have to attend the second part of this webinar that is tomorrow. So we will be providing you the link for this learning achievement batch. So basically learning achievement batch includes the modules for AZ104. So we are providing it to you all uh, for free. So make sure you attend the second half of this webinar so we can provide you all with this link. So you just have to follow the steps and get that uh, batch activated to get the access to modules for AZ104. 
Then we have Microsoft certifications. We have fundamental courses like AZ 900, TP 900, AI 900, PL 900, SC 900. Then we have advanced courses uh, in DP 100, AI 102, SC 200 and all. So if you're interested to get the paid training on any of this uh, certification courses, you can just connect us. I will share the details with you all in the chat box. Then the next certification webinar uh, is on SC 200, which is on 11th of March from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So this will be a live webinar on SC 200. So if you're interested to join this webinar, I will share the registration link in the chat box so you can register yourself. Then do follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. I will be sharing the uh, page links again in the chat box for your reference. So you can just go and you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on our LinkedIn page to get the relevant updates. So now I will hand over the mic to Makran sir. So he will go ahead with the webinar on AZ104. Thank you all. Thanks, thanks, Sachin. So good evening, uh, everyone. I'll be sharing my screen. Once my screen is you know, uh, up, you can inform me by writing into a chat. Yeah, so we can see your screen. OK, thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, so we are gathered over here you know, uh, for uh, AC104 certification you know, uh, course introduction. OK, so I will be giving you, you know, um, a course introduction you know, uh, in these two days of session to half days of session. OK. So before we get uh, start with this session, you know, let me introduce myself uh, to you. Uh, my name is Makran, Makran Bhoir. And I'm having uh, around 15 plus years of teaching plus development experience. I'm Microsoft certified trainer, MCP. And I have, uh, you know, Azure certification, Azure fundamental, Azure administration, Azure developer, and Azure uh, DevOps also. So I am um, Azure DevOps engineer currently. And uh, as you all know, you know I'm working in the Synergetics as a technical trainer for Azure, Java, and OSS technology. Okay. So as we know, the course, you know, uh, the exam course structure you know, is having uh, topics like, uh, you know, uh, some of the topics like which includes uh, Azure identity, Azure governance, Azure compute storage and network, you know. So all these are the topics which will be included, uh, you know, in the certification exam, you know. Uh, including uh, backup and storage, you know, sorry, uh, backup and monitoring. Okay. So, so I have categorized, you know, so some of the modules will be taken, you know, in today, you know, but whatever, you know, uh, I will take up, you know, uh, so I will, you know, um, try to take up uh, with the practical also. So you will see, you know, the practical demonstration also along with the, you know, uh, some theoretical stuff which we will be discussing. Okay, but of course, uh, you know, uh, since this is a webinar and since it is only, you know, two half day webinar, you know, um, uh, you won't be able to do it uh, along with uh, me, you know, the practice. Okay, so, so you'll have to only, you know, just observe, you know, 
and wherever you are having a doubt you can you can write it into a chat box okay so you can write your queries in the chat box okay so i will i will read that query and i'll try to answer you know your query okay so that's it about me you know uh, and let's get started Okay. So we'll be getting started, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Azure identity, Azure compliance, and Azure governance. You know, okay. In you know, in this particular session, okay, in today's session, and in tomorrow's session, we'll be talking about uh, Azure network compute and storage. You know, so we'll be. You know, talking about uh, you know that in tomorrow's session. So I have categorized the session in this way. Okay. So let's start discussing. You know, okay, about um, you know, Azure first before before getting into even into you know um uh, the Azure you know one zero four you know topic you know in general. What do you understand by Azure? You know, okay. So, what do you mean by you know, Azure? Okay. So, in short, can you just write it down in the chat box? You know, okay. So, what do you mean by you know, okay, cloud computing? So, if I if I just uh, you know know your point of view about cloud computing, it will be great. So I'll wait for two minutes and I'll wait for response. Yeah, uh, Lux is providing answers. You know, it's public cloud provider. You know, Azure is a public cloud provider. Correct. You know. Sri Ram providing response like uh, it is a cloud service provider providing compute services. Okay. Cloud computing access to the IT infrastructure over internet. You know, that's correct. Jaspal is writing. It let us to use all our resources in the one place. Yeah, it is true. You know, okay. So, so cloud. You know, uh, one of the you know type of a cloud, uh, which is public cloud, which is very very familiar, uh, which is very very famous. You know, okay, and one of the type of a public cloud is a Azure. You know, so Azure is the one of the cloud platform, uh, which offers you a varieties of a services, which includes you know. Compute service, storage service, networking service, you know. So all those services you can, you know, you can get it in one single umbrella of Azure. Okay. So having said this, you know, okay. So let's get into you know uh, our topic. Yeah, some people are you know providing a response. So Amit is providing cloud computing provides to IT infra and manage compute and storage networks. Yes, that's true. You know, Ravindra is providing response. Cloud computing enables on-demand services like compute, storage, network, etc. Coach. Okay. So you know. So overall, as I said, a cloud computing, you know, which provide us. Compute service, network service, and storage service. Okay. So one of the topic, uh, you know, from 
AZ 900, uh, sorry, AZ 104, you know, certification exam, okay, uh, which, which is Azure Administration exam, Azure Governance, Azure Identity, you know, okay. So, which carries about, uh, you know, 20% of weightage in the examination, okay. So, we'll discuss first, what is Active Directory? What do you mean by Active Directory, you know, okay. So, if you if you talk about Active Directory, you know, is a cloud-based identity, you know, uh, which is useful uh, for accessing your you know users' information. You know, so Active Directory is a place where your identity, user identity, and some kind of a device identity will be maintained. Okay. So, so I hope uh, you are able to see my screen. Is my screen is up? Can you just respond? Okay, thank you. So, So Azure Active Directory, you know, is a cloud-based uh, identity and access management service. Okay. So this is the place, you know, okay, this is your you know, uh, Azure Active Directory is going to store what users credential, you know, okay. So this will help you to authenticate, you know, you as a user, okay. This will help you to authenticate, you know, your devices, which will be connected to the, you know, machine or which will be connected to the, you know, uh, on-premise network or any kind of a cloud network. Okay. So, for example, you know, uh, your company is having, okay. So, let's say uh, varieties of a net, you know, application. Okay. So. Every application, you know, you require to provide or you require to, you know, just uh, remember the username and the password, you know, okay. So ultimately, every application requires the username and the password, you know? okay. So for example, uh, let's say this, uh, you know, Outlook as a one application, Skype as one application, Microsoft Team as a one application, you know, OneDrive as an application, you know, Azure as an application, you know, Power BI as a, you know, one application. So every application need, you know, the credential, which we need to supply ultimately to authenticate ourselves to that application. Okay. So rather than maintaining, uh, you know, uh, different username and password, you know, for every other application, okay. So, is it is it not good to have one single username and a password, which will be stored somewhere in the central location, okay? And you know these application you know will connect to this Active Directory, you know, for that uh, you know uh, verification of that uh, you know user user ID and the password, okay? So ultimately, all the user credential, you know, which will be maintained you know, on the cloud, you know, okay, you will be keeping all the credential, okay, inside the Azure Active Directory. You know? So Azure Active Directory is a central place where we can maintain user identity, okay, and, you know, okay, uh, optionally we can maintain a device identity also. Okay. Got it? Okay. So it provides application management, you know, authentication, device management, etc. Okay. So for example, you are accessing, you know, let's suppose say if you are accessing 
Okay. This particular website, you know, so, you know, so this website will be open, you know, so very first thing, it will ask you to, you know, verify yourself. It will ask you username and the password, you know, so whatever be the username and the password you're providing, you know, okay. So your, you know, uh, username and the password will be checked inside the active directory. Okay. So if it is present, you know, if if this ID password, you know, verification is completed by using this, you know, active directory and okay, it is as per this active directory, it is correct credential, then only you will be able to, you know, uh, proceed ahead. Then only you'll be able to take back, you know, to the home page of that application. So ultimately you can remember this thing, you know, okay. So rather than maintaining, you know, for every other application, the individual credential, you know, so we can have a single credential, you know, store inside the active directory, which we can use for, you know, every other application within the organization. For accessing, you know, application within the organization, you know, so this will help us to, you know, achieve the single sign on, you know, concept also. Got it? Okay. So anybody has any, uh, you know, confusion over here? So they can write on the chat box. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Lux. Ravi, thanks. Okay, so let's let's move ahead. Okay, so as I said, Active Directory helps your employee to sign in and access any resources, you know, from the organization. Okay. So Active Directory maintains, you know, okay, uh, the user information such as, uh, you know, name, ID, email, password, you know, and their personal information, okay. And that information will be ultimately maintained inside the, you know, active directory by the organization. Okay. And it will be used within the organization, you know, to verify the identity of that particular user. Okay. So what do you mean by identity? You know, so identity, that means, you know, it is user or application, okay, or, you know, uh, the device, uh, which, you know, uh, ultimately authenticated by that Active Directory. And once after authentication, you know, okay, it will uh, send back one kind of a token, you know, with the help of that token, your application can come to know, you know, whether that uh, user is a valid user or not. Yeah, uh, so Ravi is asking about MFA. You know, MFA is a multi factor authentication. Okay, so, uh, you know, multi factor authentication is a separate concept. Uh, no? Okay, uh, so if you are accessing, you know, one particular, you know, uh, website, you no. Know, if user is accessing one particular website or if admin is accessing one particular website and if that, uh, you know, uh, for that user, for that admin, okay, the multi-factor authentication is enabled, you know, so it will ask, that application will ask to verify your identity, you know, okay, by providing your ID password, that is one, you know, okay, and it will, secondly, it will ask you, you know, uh, by sending a email verification, 
Okay, so it might send uh, email verification OTP on the email or onto your phone. You know? So once you provide that code, you know, okay, uh, then you know you are verifying yourself, your identity twice. You know, so that is you know multiple time I'm you know verifying you know my identity. So that is multi-factor authentication. Okay. So for administrator, you know, um, by default, multi-factor authentication is enabled. Okay, but for normal user, we'll have to enable uh, that multi-factor authentication. Got it, Ravi? Yeah, it is. It is, uh, you know, uh, Surya Prakash saying, you know, two way verification for your identity. You know? So it is just go and verify multiple time whether, you know, uh, the right person is, uh, you know, accessing your account. Okay. OK, as per the Microsoft documentation, you know, as for this. Um, every day, you know, Azure Active Directory manages over 1.2 billion of identity, you know. So this will, uh, you know, uh, the Active Directory verifies, uh, you know, over 1.2 billion of identity, you know, that is users and you know, devices. OK. Then there is a concept called as a tenant, you know, OK. So what do you mean by tenant? OK. So tenant, uh, you know, represents an organization. You know? It represents an organization. Tenant will be automatically created, you know, uh, when you sign, sign up for the Microsoft, uh, you know, cloud subscription. OK, then uh, you know by default uh, one tenant will be created. OK, and that tenant will be associated, you know, oh, oh, that tenant will be associated with one instance of Active Directory. OK, so you can remember ultimately. What is one tenant, you know? So tenant is a instance of Active Directory. You know. So what is instance? That means you know in the simple word, it's a object of you know Active Directory. So every tenant will have you know okay. Um. Separate, uh, you know, um, uh, separate uh, users information, you know, OK. So for example, you are having a company, you know, OK. So, you know, if the company is having, you know, um, you know, 10 employees which are working inside, you know. So that, uh, you know, you will go and create those 10 employees, uh, you know, uh, account in that, you know, organization, OK. So that organization ultimately represent you know tenant and tenant will have a separate instance of you know active directory. So over here, you know, all those 10 information, 10 user accounts will be maintained, you know, which will be separate. You know, if you go and create another tenant, you know, if you go and create another you know uh, company, you know, okay, so which will be separate from this tenant. OK, so please make sure, you know, so the relation between tenant and, you know, uh, active directory exam point of view, this is, uh, you know, important to understand, 
you know uh, what is tenant and what is uh, you know okay what is the relationship uh, between you know tenant you know okay so i'll repeat tenant you know represents an organization okay one tenant is equal to one instance of an active directory okay one tenant is equal to one single instance of the active directory okay so the term tenant you know okay means single instance of active directory which represents an organization okay your point to be noted you know so word tenant you know and the directory you know are sometimes used you know interchangeably okay so during during this course you know i may use sometime a tenant you know i may use sometime directory you know so tenant and directory you know um, are you know ultimately will be you know pointing to the organization okay and we can go and create our own tenant also and i'll show you how to create our own tenant you know? okay practically also no we can't use uh, you know single active directory for multiple tenant okay so for example you open one company you know let's suppose say i'm just giving you one example you know see for example you open one company okay okay so you have a company a you know so company a is one tenant you know and one tenant will have one instance of you know active directory so there will be one instance of active directory will be associated with this tenant okay so inside this active directory you know whatever be the list of users i am having you know okay so whatever be the list of users i am having so that will be you know okay stay in this tenant only so vis-a-vis -vis, you know i go and create another company you know let's suppose say you know company b okay so that will have another instance of you know active directory you know so which will have you know again a separate uh, you know users information you know so we'll have to create separate users over here okay so this user you know will be separately maintained okay and these users will be separately maintained okay so i can say this these users will be isolated from this users okay so this you can you know say as tenant or company or directory okay and this you can you know instance of active directory i hope it is clear to you Yeah, it is uh, possible to add multiple tenants. You know, Abhishek, it is clear. Uh, just everybody, can you just give me a response? Uh, my voice is clear. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Lux, Sriram. Yeah, thanks, thanks.
that is possible to create a different tenant amit okay i'll uh, i'll just show you so i'll just uh, you know uh, switch back to my portal so i'll just open it no laksh you know so your xyz.com and abc.com these are two you know uh, i believe you know you are considering these are two different company domain you know which means xyz.com is uh, you know separated you know uh, xyz.com represents uh, two company a abc.com is rep representing company b you know so they will have a different uh, you know instance of uh, you know, okay so you can understand one tenant represents one instance of active directory i'll just show you you know okay and then uh, you know, okay you can we can discuss okay so if you look at uh, you know okay uh, this is the you know uh, uh, the look and feel you will see the azure portal you know so you have to just go and say you know portal.azure.com uh, okay and uh, for accessing you know uh, the resources which are present you know on the um, you know uh, the azure uh, we need to have you know the subscription you know so currently i am using one subscription as a part of a mct you know visual studio subscription okay so since i am the mct you know uh, i am having uh, every month you know i i'm going to get some you know credit amount uh, so around 10000 rupees i'll get every month you know okay so if you are not uh, you know okay obviously uh, uh, if you are not uh, you know mct then there are other options also you can registered yourself you know for a free account also okay okay in that free account you know while registration you know we'll, we need to provide um, uh the credit card information just to verify your identity okay but it is it is not going to charge you for one month you know okay and after one month you know okay if you are not upgrading your account your account will be disabled you know so it will still not charge anything you know until and unless you go and upgrade your account to you know pay as you go okay okay for accessing the resources ultimately you know okay for accessing the resources you have to have you know any kind of a subscription okay then then only you will be able to create uh, you know some paid resources for example storage account virtual machines stuff like that okay and we are interested in you know this active directory you know uh, by the way you know just to check out the active directory you need you need not uh, you know require any kind of a subscription you know okay you can just uh, you know go and create uh, you know uh, freely you know the active directory and you know inside that you can create the tenant also you know freely okay you do not require any kind of a subscription inside this okay so you can get into the active directory you know by clicking on this okay if it is not visible over here you can just search for active directory from here okay or you know okay you can go over here and you know you can click on all services okay and 
under all services you know there is identity you know service okay you have to click on this identity service you know and once you click on this identity service you will get you know active directory okay and once you you know get into this active directory okay so here you will see something called as manage tenant isn't it and when you click on this manage tenant okay over here you know okay so you will see the list of organization you know okay which you have created so currently you know i am having these many organization okay which are listed you know under my account okay so if i want i can create a new tenant okay new organization by clicking on this you know create button okay and if i do that you know okay it will have a different uh, you know uh, a set of users different set of groups since it is you know separate instance of the active directory you know so i'll just show you you know so currently i am into you know can you see this the so currently i am into a primary directory you know so that means this is my default directory i am logged in into the primary directory this you know and if i if i just go and check out you know what all users i am having in this you know tenants active directory you know so if you just go and check out you know the list of users you know so here you will see there are two users i am not added uh, you know users there are two users only okay so this is my you know um, owners account you know this is makran.boyer you know at live.com that is the owners account you know uh, using which uh, you know uh, i have registered you know uh, myself for the mct and since it is part of the mct you know uh, the microsoft is only you know uh, giving all the every month it's going to you know uh, credit some amount on that account you know so as a part of uh, you know adding a new user i have added this user into this account you know okay so my another id makran bhoir other it synergetics you know dot com synergetics india dot com so that user i have added into this particular active directory instance so there are currently two users are present you know in this particular you know tenant but if i just look at the other tenants okay if i just switch back you know uh, to my company okay if i just switch back to the my company so for switching you know so you can select this and can you see this but button switch you have to click on this okay or else okay you have to just click on this profile icon okay and there is a button called as uh, there is a link called as switch directory okay switch directory and we'll be you know clicking on this switch directory okay and after that it will ask me you know okay which is the directory you want to switch so this is your current directory you know okay i want to switch to the you know my company so if i switch it to the my company you know okay so there okay there i'll have to go to the active directory okay now you have you have logged in to the my company tenant you know okay and can you see you now there are you know four users and you know if you look at which are they users you know okay there are these many users okay so there are different set of user for the my company and there are different set of user for my primary directory you know okay since 
बोतर दी टेनेंट टेनेंट यू नो सो एवरी टेनेंट रिप्रेजेंट्स ओके वन इंस्टेंस ऑफ यू नो एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी Got it? Okay. So just to you know, um, explain you briefly, uh, Abhishek. Okay. So Azure Active Directory, you know, is kind of a um, uh, identity and access management. okay so which is going to help you to store the you know identity of the user you know rather than you know maintaining identity you know separate identity for different application you know okay we will maintain one single identity you know which can be used by you know okay every different application within the organization okay So now I'll switch back to the you know primary you know, directory. So is it clear to you, everybody? Abhishek is asking something. no uh, you know uh, i a m you know uh, which is access management which you are talking about i believe uh, related to the resource you know so there are separate uh, you know uh, you know a uh, topic which is related to the resource uh, you know access that is called as a rbac role based you know okay uh, access and uh, you know there is a separate concept called as uh, you know um yeah so it is uh, you know okay um uh, the second statement abhishek is correct uh, you know okay so it is uh, used for you know uh, giving the access to the user as per their role you know so we can assign you know okay one user as a user administrator okay one as a maybe as a contributor you know okay one as global administrator so there are different set of you know roles which are active directory roles so you can give you know active directory role you know to the different set of users okay and based on their based on their you know rights correct uh surya prakash is asking i have two do domain in my organization okay is it possible to add those domain into single tenant no i believe it is uh, not possible you know okay Uh, but uh, you know if you want some of the user you know from company a you want to you know you know pull into the company b active directory so you can add company a users as a external user into your company b that is possible you know okay और इस सूर्य प्रकाश ओके सो लेट्स सी यू नो नाउ लेट्स सी हाउ टू क्रिएट नो अ 
how to create our own tenant. Okay, so just to create my you know new tenant, I'll just go to the manage tenant. Okay, I'll go over here and click over here, you know, create new tenant. Okay, so I want to create Azure Active Directory. Okay. Uh, then next, you know, we'll have to specify the configuration of that uh, new Azure Active uh, you know, Directory, you know, which means your tenant. Okay, so then what is the name of you know, your tenant? You know, so for example, my so let's say this is the name of my company, so Smartcom. Okay, and let's see whether it is available or not. Smartcom.microsoft.com. So it is already been taken. So let me use something unique string. So let me add some unique string. Okay. So this is available. You know. So this is your. You know. Uh, ultimately, this will be your uh, the domain. Okay, for your company. You know. So Smartcom. 1658.onmicrosoft.com. This will be ultimately will be domain. Okay. And what is the location? So I'll just keep India as our location. Okay. And let's go and create this tenant. Okay. And if we just go and create a tenant, it may ask us for verification. So let's get start verification. Submit it. Okay, this will take few seconds to create uh, a tenant. Okay, and after few seconds, uh, we can see our tenant will be created and tenant will be listed. Okay, meanwhile, my tenant is getting created. Let me read some questions. Daksh is asking in my company, how is it possible? Yes, what is this possible? I have four custom domain under one AD. Daksh okay. is asking, uh, multiple queries. Uh, so he is asking, what is the difference between AAD Active Directory and no AAD B two C? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ravi is also having a same query. So let me just uh, you know take. Few second, few minute to explain that term. Um, what is A B B two C? You know, okay. So you you know that Active Directory. You know, okay. And what do you mean by Active Directory B two C? You know, okay. So for example, um, you're having, you know, okay, uh, some of the application which will be, you know, okay, used by, uh, maybe, uh, maybe your customers, okay. Maybe you're giving the rights to access your application, which is present within your organization. Okay, so for example, I'm having over here one application. Okay, so this is my application, and application will be used by you know. Okay, uh, maybe any uh, client. 
you know okay you don't know who will be accessing my application you know okay and this is uh, you know typically your customer facing application you know okay you are having you know you are writing you know some kind of a web application you know okay it will be used by the normal public you know okay so while using you know your application by normal public normal clients you know okay so client can you know okay uh, access your application by setting you know on the home setting on the offices you know okay okay from the desktop from the mobile you know okay from anywhere you know they can access your application you know okay okay so what is b2c so you have seen something called as you know um uh, by, while accessing the maybe uh, maybe any kind of a website you know okay it will give you option to create uh, you know your uh, user id and a password for that particular website or it will allow us to you know access uh, it uh, you know access that application by using one of the you know uh, you know uh, one of the social media account you know which is which is maybe google facebook twitter you know okay or instagram you know okay so for that you know you require you know all those you know okay all those uh, you know um, instances or all those uh, you know social media you know um, valid accounts you know okay so will be verified by you know it will not be verified by you you know it will be verified by you know some external identity okay so which will be maintained by you know okay maybe uh, instagram or facebook or google you know it will be maintained by you know any other you know identity okay so if you want to register you know okay like that you know okay for your application for your customer facing application you know okay you want to give you know um you know uh, the capability to your user you know you can access my application you know if you do not provide you know the id password you know which which is created by you know this application that is okay but still you will be able to access my application by providing the credential you know okay of facebook you know okay instagram or google etc you know so you will be accessing your application you know okay uh, you know by logging in you know uh, into the facebook instagram google twitter etc any kind of a social media you know account you know so that we can configure you know uh, in the b2c so i hope you know the idea is clear to you yes uh, laksh ravi you know is that clear to you what is you know b2c so you are not going to provide the identity which is stored inside your active directory but you will be using the identity which will be present uh, in the any one of the social media you know okay uh, accounts identity okay okay uh, thanks thanks for coming okay uh, so our tenant create you know okay tenant has created successfully and once it is created let me just cancel it uh, let me go back and see you know okay and there you go so this is my you know new tenant has been created okay and if you lo just look at you know your new tenant you know okay so your new tenant will not have you know um, the users which are present in the my company or you know primary directory 
Okay, primary directory is just the name, you know, of a tenant. I have just renamed this. Okay, so let me just switch. You know, we can switch the you know a directory or tenant by going over here, or we can directly do that. You know, switching by selecting this. Okay, and click on a switch. And if you just switch back to the newly created tenant, you know. You will not see any user except one user, you know. Okay, your, you know, uh, this primary user, you know, this is the owner of this, you know. So if you just look at that users, you know, you will find only one user which is present over here. You know, so ideally, you know, so every company will have, you know, every tenant will have, you know, uh, the one single instance of the Active Directory. Okay, and if you have, you know, two different, uh, you know, Active Directory, you know, there are way, you know, you can sync, you know, both the, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, the directories together. Okay, so if you are having a uh, on-premise Active Directory, you know, you want, you know, uh, your on-premise Active Directory to be, you know, uh, store inside, you know, the Azure Active Directory, you know, so you can send those on-premise Active Directory to the Azure Active Directory. There is, you know, uh, there is way you know, to do that also. Okay, but if you want to create your own user, we can just go and create, you know, our own user, you know. Okay, and this, this is our own user is going to be a direct user, you know, direct member, of this active directory. Okay. Got it? Okay. So just confirm once. Once it is. Yeah. So let's come back to the. No. Okay this and let us discuss some other point So what do you mean by identity? You know, okay. So identity is an object that can be authenticated. You know, so you can authenticate you know user as an identity or you no know, um, or you know maybe a device as a identity. Uh, Abhishek, I'll uh, you know come to come back to your question. You know, okay. Once we you know. Uh, uh, you know, go, 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 go ahead, you know, so and specific time. I'll, I'll just come back to your query. Uh, Ravi, it is not, uh, you know, okay. Active directory is not, uh, you know, uh, chargeable. You can use that active directory freely, you know, okay. Uh, but you know, in that active directory, you know, uh, you won't be able to create the resources. You know, ultimately you require to create the resources, so you won't be able to create those resources. Active directories, uh, you know, you can use freely. You know, but uh, for creating the resources, you require you know, okay, the subscription. Got it? So you can see this uh, account, you know, is an identity that uh, has data associated with it. 
you know so i can create you know the account inside uh, you know uh, the active directory you know so that account will be acting as one identity so i'll just uh, you know talk about uh, you know uh, the tenant and directory once again you know so it is a dedicated and trust instance of azure active directory you know okay so tenant will be created uh, you know automatically when you know you organization sign up for cloud subscription you know so additional instance of active directory can be created you know okay without any cost without any you know uh, you know uh, uh, money spent you know and as i said you know tenant and directory are you know oftenly used interchangeably okay okay then uh, here you are having you know okay few types of uh, you know um, the active directory licenses you know okay so these are the active directory licenses you know okay you need to remember you know uh, remember this this point this figure you know for the example interview you know so in the free instance you know um, you will be able to create uh, you know maximum of 50000 or 50000 of 5 lakh you know object okay so you know that many object you can create uh, you know uh, in the free you know uh, free uh, license of uh, ed active directory okay but uh, if you are purchasing you know the other premium plans you know uh, then there is no limit you know of having the you know users or identity you know within the active directory okay so you need to remember this uh, you know uh, for example point of view this these are important so for example you know your conditional access you know okay so your identity protection identity governance you know okay uh, these are the premium features you know okay are available in the premium version only you know especially you need to remember this conditional access you know okay so conditional access is uh, you know uh, not available in the free version you know free license of azure active directory you know so it is available inside the premium version you know you need to remember for the exam point of view you know okay i'll show you on uh, you know uh, on website on the portal where you can see this option okay but let me just go through and i just cover this point you know okay so you can uh you can register your devices also you know okay uh within within the active directory you know and there are few types of you know uh, device registration you know uh, so you can you can say as your active directory registration you have another type called as as your active directory join and you know um you know hybrid ed join so that option you will get it over here you know so if you come over here in your active directory you know okay so this is the place you know, okay first you will see that information about a uh, licenses you know okay so on your active directory you know you will see option called as licenses and and in that page you know i will come to know you know what is my current license okay and what are the features present inside my current license you know okay so what is my current license if i just come over here license feature okay so all these are the license feature you will be able to see 
but somewhere over here in the overview section you will see you know that uh, ad free Okay, not over here. I believe it it is shown over here. Yeah, can you see? So under overview section of Active Directory itself, you know, the license type is specified. You know, so um, by default, when you create you know any kind of a tenant, any organization, you know, by default it will be you know having you know AD free Azure Active Directory free. No, okay. So some of the uh, premium feature, for example, conditional access, for example, uh, uh, SSPR, you know, that means uh, uh, self-signed, uh, sorry, what is that, SSPR is form of yeah, self-service password reset, you know, okay. So that feature you will be, you know, uh, having only in the premium, you know, okay, license, okay, and currently you are using, you know, okay, the free license, okay, and if you want, you know, okay, to purchase a premium license, you know, okay, so you have to go to this license, okay, and okay, uh, inside the all products. So over here, you will see, you know, try and buy button. Okay, so you have to click on this try and buy button. You know, okay, and for thirty days, you know, okay, you will get, uh, you know, these licenses. You know, you can use these licenses for free. You know, so at least for practice purpose, you know, we can try out, uh, you know, okay, purchasing these, uh, you know, licenses. You know, so we will get. So I can just buy you know, premium version you know, free trial. So I can activate this free trial. You know? So this in this you know, free trial, you will get about 100 licenses and that will be active on, only for 30 days. Okay. And after that, you will have to you know, manually go and purchase you know, okay, the paid version. If you did not purchase, you know your active directory will be you know okay uh, you know will be disabled or will be you know okay uh, made to the free okay so let me just activate this this will take some time okay so once i activate this okay. if i refresh it you know after some time you will see If I just hard refresh a couple of times, you will get that uh, you know, list over there. Okay. So after this, after a few minutes, I will see this option. You know? And once you know, I am having these options, you know, okay. So I can I can have what uh, 100 you know available licenses, you know. So I can assign the licenses to you know uh, individual users, you know, and those users, you know, can then will be able to use your premium features like for example you know the conditional access and sspr got it okay and this option you know okay uh, device so you will get that option if you just go come back to the 
Active Directory once again. Okay, there's a section called as you know, device. Okay, so in this device, you know, okay, so you will see how many devices are currently, you know, okay, uh, attached to my Active Directory. So as of now, I don't have any kind of a devices, you know, okay. So I will not see any kind of a list. Okay. But if you just go back, you know, in my previous organization, Okay. And if I just go back. And look at the, you know, device. Okay. So over there, you know, I'm having one device, you know, which is joined. Okay by using you know ad join okay so the example of you know uh, ad join and ad registration okay so you can think of you know in the azure active directory registration you know uh, you can use your own computer. You can use your personal computer and you can register you know, that your personal computer with your active directory. Okay. Okay. So you can, you know, register your device, you know, into your active directory, you know, by doing active directory registration. Okay. And what you can have, you can have, you know, okay, the concept of a AD join, you can use, you know, okay, uh, your company machine, you know, and company machine will be associated always with the, you know, okay, uh, your, you know, uh, your Active Directory users. You know? So there, you know, okay, you will not, uh, probably you will have a restriction, you know, to set up your, own user credential okay so like that i'm just having one machine okay i have created one virtual machine you know and i have joined that one with you know uh, the virtual machine over here okay okay and if you want to register your you know okay um your own machine your personal machine okay to your Active Directory of Azure Active Directory. So there is only one, you know, simple step you have to perform. Okay, so you have to just go and say, okay, so access, okay, this option, access work or school, you have to click on this option. Okay, and you know you have to just connect. You know, okay, and once you hit connect, it will ask you to provide your you know ID. You know, so the ID which you have to provide, you know, the ID which is present inside your Active Directory, the user email address will have to provide which is present inside my Active Directory. You know, so currently I can't do this, you know, okay, because currently my machine is uh, you know, connected with my organization. Okay, so my personal machine is registered, you know, okay, with this organization. Can you see this? You know, so like I'm working for, you know, synergetics, you know, so there are maybe, you know, a uh, hundred more people are working for the synergetics, you know, so you will see, you know, if you look at the synergetics active directory, there you will see hundred plus devices will be registered. Okay. So that, you know, registration of all the devices, you will see it over here, you know, okay. And you can control them, you know, you can, you know, disable, enable, you know, delete, you know, okay. You can control them as a, you know, 
administrator as a global administrator. Okay. So after this, you know, okay, let me just go and create, you know, another user. You know, let, let me just go and create the another user into the newly created tenant only. Let me just go back to my tenant. I have created this smart com tenant. I'm, I'm going to switch to the smart com tenant. So I have switched to smartcom. I will open the active directory. I'll go to the users. Okay. And under user, you know, I may go and click on, you know, create new user. You know, so there are two kinds of user you can create. You know, you can create new user or you can invite external user within your you know organization active directory you know so i am just going to create a new user later on i'll just create a, you know i will invite you know um, uh, some of you into my organization okay so let me just go and create new user okay and i'll say Rahul. Maybe I'll just say Rahul less. And I'll just put Rahul S as a first name and last name. And after that, uh, you know, uh, what is the credential? You know? So I'll just put uh, the password. You know? I'll just put that password. Okay, I will not auto generate the password. Rather, I'll just put the password or I can auto generate the password also, you know, but if you auto generate this password, you will have to, you know. <laughs> remember this password, you know. Okay, and. By the way, it will ask us to you know, modify the password for the first time. So let me just generate it auto, you know, automatically because anyhow I have to change it, you know, okay, first time. Okay. So I'll just save it that password somewhere. So in case I lost. OK, so after that, you know, OK, you can control, you know, OK. So once the user is created, whether you want, you know, whether you uh, want uh, him or her to log in directly or not, you can enable or disable the login, you know, OK. You can set uh, the location. So what is our location? So India, you can set uh, you know, okay, uh, the job title. So okay, maybe and company name and you know. So you can specify who is the manager, okay, <clears throat> and you can create this user, you know, okay. But after that, user has been created. You can, you know, uh, edit his personal information. For example, you can edit uh, the mobile number. You can edit, uh, you know, okay, the email after user has been created, you know. So let me just go and create these user with initial detail. So once the user is created. You know, OK, you will see in few seconds that user will be appearing over here. Can you see? And. So this is the you know, ID. You know? So can you see this is the ID? OK, you will have to use. To access the portal. You know? I can. This is altogether, you know, OK, a new Microsoft ID. I have created, you know, okay. So I can access any kind of application, you know, using this ID, you know, okay. But of course, you know, depending on the rights, I will be able to, you know, okay, uh, do the operation or not, you know, okay, that uh, determines, you know, okay, whether I'm having the appropriate rights or not, you know, but I will be able to access, you know, okay. So 
for example, now I'm opening one browser instance. I'm opening a new browser instance. You know, I'll just go and go to the portal. Okay, and I'll just provide the email ID. Okay, of newly created user. Okay, I'll just say next. I'll just provide the password of newly created user. OK, I'll say sign in. OK, once I sign in, it will ask to change my password. So I'm just giving a default password. OK, and once I complete sign in, you know, OK, ultimately. You have seen the password. So let me use. Okay, so I'm just putting that password. Uh, you have to remember that your password should have, you know, um, at least one number, one special character, one digit. You know? Okay, so that combination is required you know, for that password. You know? And once you are able to log in, you know, okay, you have logged in as a this newly created user only. OK, so depending on what rights that newly created user has, you know, OK, that person will be able to do, you know, that operation. Isn't it? OK, so is that clear to you? You know, OK, the process of you know, creating a user. This uh, give me a confirmation. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sri Ram. Thank you, Ravi. OK, and you know, you can you know, invite some external user you know, into your account. Huh? So for example, you can invite you know, any external user. So I may just go and provide you know, my you know, uh, ID. OK, I can provide. You know, OK, my another email ID, maybe email ID of a Gmail you know, of uh, or maybe a live account or you may provide, you know. Uh, you may provide one of your account, you know, so let me add you as you know, uh, the user in my account. You know? So so I will I will need I will require one you know, email ID, you know, so that can that can be added into my you know account. So can you just provide one email ID from your side? Yeah, Dhananjay will take a tea break around at six o'clock. Uh, you know. Yeah,
Yeah, thanks. Uh, Laksh has provided some email ID. So let me just take that email ID. And Sachin, um, you're raising the hand. Hello, Sachin. Is there any specific reason why you're raising the hand? Okay, so I just uh, assume that this has happened accidentally. OK, so I'll just provide. This user as you know, the external user. Uh, yes, uh, Amit, uh, no, external user and internal user, you know, okay, are uh, straightforward only, you know, okay. External user means what, uh, which is, uh, you know, available external to your organization, okay. Internal user means what, you are creating, you know, inside the Active Directory, one user, you know, in, for that, uh, you know, user, you will be creating your account. You will be creating your own account your for the own user. You know? So, for example, you know, okay, you are establishing a company, you know, into your company, 10 people are working. So you will be creating, you know, okay, the 10 ID and 10 password for every, you know, user. Okay. For every user, you will be creating one ID and one password. Okay. And uh, you are working on some particular project, you know, one project, you know, OK, and you maybe you stuck, you know, at some point in time, OK, and during that point, you hire, you know, some external consultant, you know, OK, and uh, to have that discussion to show the, you know, your resources, you need to provide that external consultant, you know, you need to pull him, you know, into your organization. So over here, that external consultant will be acting as an external user. And whatever be the 10 users, you know, who are working in your organization, they will be acting as an internal user. I hope this is clear to you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just putting this first name and the last name, you know. And after that, uh, so I'll just uh, specify these information. So Okay, or you can say external employee or a contract employee. Okay, and once I send the invite, you know, on this email ID, okay, you will receive the invitation. You know, OK, and. Once the invitation. You know. Uh, will be accepted, so this person needs to, you know, uh, accept my invitation. You know? So once you, you know. Accept the invitation, you know, that user, you know, will see, you know. Yeah. 
can you see this you know so this user we have sent the invitation so once the invitation is accepted you know uh, the status will be changed over here you know so during that uh, you know um, acceptance process uh, he will have to self sign you know okay uh, for this uh, organization so ultimately you know this will be the email id you know okay he will be using okay for accessing you know okay my you know machine or my active directory so this within my active directory this is the you know email address will be used okay so laksh you know uh, once you accept the invitation you know you will see you know, we will see over here you know this status will be changed Jaspal is asking some question. For example, if we ask guests to take a session and we create invite user, we can do it. So, take a session. Uh, Jaspal, I didn't uh, get your question. So I believe you are asking. Yeah, I'll do that refresh. So. Okay, uh, have you accepted that uh, invitation, Laksh? So now, can you just uh, log in uh, to the portal? Okay, uh, and you may use your ID password. You know, uh, for accessing ID password, uh, you may you use this ID. I'll just share that ID. Okay, you may use this ID. Okay, for accessing, you know. Okay, you may try and access this, uh, you know, on Google or on address bar. You type this portal.azure.com. Okay, and uh, type this ID and you may provide your password, you know, whatever your password. Yeah, yeah, so just for yes, we can do that. You know, so if you want uh, to create a temporary user, we can we can do this. Okay, and uh, you know, maybe temporary you know user. That means uh, I'm just thinking that temporary user means what consultant is you know okay, uh, going to solve your issue within 15 days. You know, okay. So for the 15 days, you will just uh, you know create the user temporarily, and once the work is completed, you can you know okay disable the login or you can delete the login. Lots of special character. Just copy this uh, in the notepad. Uh, maybe uh, while copying it uh, from the teams, it might have taken uh, you know uh, extra uh, 
some extra character. So copy it into a notepad. So that will uh, remove all the formatting. And then from notepad, you can you know, use. Okay. So over here, you know, okay, you can create a bulk user also. So, you know, rather than creating a user one by one individually, you know, we can create a bulk user, you know. And if I just go and create a bulk user, you know, you can create the bulk user, you can invite, you know, the bulk user, or you can delete the bulk user, you know. Okay. So there is a special kind of a, you know um, a file you will get you know, to upload. You know once you upload you know that file, uh, you will be able to uh, create. You will be able to delete a bulk user. You know? So let me just go and use this bulk invite since I want to show you, you know, that process also. You know so that will allow us to download one file. You know. So that is uh, going to be a CSV file. OK, so that you know, file ultimately will look like this. So I'm having already uh, okay, a file with me. And if you just look at this file, So this user you know, I'm adding okay into my you know, active directory. So I'm just need to provide you know, um, uh, my user ID that is my email ID. Okay. Uh, then by default it will you know take uh, by default it will give you what uh, this URL so you can keep that as it is. You now all these things will be you know taken by default only. You can customize this, you know. Okay, so this message you will see uh, while it's sending the invitation. Okay, so let me just go and you know, upload this file, and I'm not saving this. I'm not saving this. Okay, and let me just go and upload. That file. User invite template. I just go and say this. File uploaded successfully, and I'll just submit it. Okay. And once this process is done. So we can create a you know, bulk user you know, like this. So like this, you can have what uh, 10 to 15 entries or even 100 entries uh, you know, okay, present inside that. You know, so you will be able to create uh, you know, 100 users you know, together. So rather than using this one by one, you can do it uh, you know, all together once. You know? So I may go and use this ID now to so first of all, I should accept the invitation. So let me just go and accept the invitation first. Get some email. That email. Yeah, smart com invite. So you will see that message which we have customized. And once you accept the invitation, you just complete this. Signing process. 
Okay, so I'll accept. So this will be, you know, uh, accepting a process and while accepting yourself sign in, uh, you know, to that organization, to which organization to the smart smart form organization. Okay, and once it is, you know, logged in, you know, you will be taken into the default URL, you know, so this will be the default URL, you know, so I don't want that default URL. So let me close it. Okay, and I'll just open another instance. A browser in in the you know, private window, so let me just close and I have. I have one more instance, no, so let me close that. And over there, I'll just log in as. OK, I'll just copy this and I'll just log in as. That newly created user. No? OK, so this is my. No, my ID, my Gmail ID. Which I have provided. You couldn't find count in the assistant. Okay. Why it is not working like this? Let me just go and get my ID. By the way, this is the process. Um, so I'll just try now to log in as this. Some old. Okay, I'm trying to log in uh, with that uh, newly created user.
Okay, so I have logged in to the newly created user, but you know, can you see this? You know, it has taken me to the default directory. And if I just go and switch the directory, so over here I should see that you know okay, that smart com, so which is not you know available over here. So I believe this is the glitch. You know, this is not uh, you know taking as of now to you know log in into your you know um, Azure Active Directory or to the portal. You know? But this is the way you know you will put this ID only, uh, and you will have to put your own password. Okay. Uh, so Lux, can you just try this uh, after some time? And I'll just also try, you know, this after maybe half an hour, one hour, you know, okay. And we'll just verify, you know, whether it is working or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that okay, guys? So I'll just verify, you know, okay, uh, whether it is, you know, allowing us to get into the portal by using this ID. Okay. So since it is external user, you know, for external user as an administrator, I will not, uh, you know, control the password. External user password will be provided by you only. So whatever be the, you know, uh, ID password of your email, uh, you know, your account ID, you will be using your account password only. Okay, um, so got it, guys. Uh, so we'll wait for you know small tea break. Uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, ten minutes of tea break. We'll wait for. Okay, and once we come back, uh, you know, post tea. Okay, uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, what is self service password reset? You know, uh, and how to activate you know self service password reset? You know, and some of the you know concept. Um, you know, which is uh, left from um, Azure governance and Azure you know, identity. OK, so after break, uh, we will see you know, this SSPR feature. You know, OK, and then uh, uh, we will see you know, okay, some concept called as a administrative units. You know, OK, and there, you know, OK, uh, I will take a question of Abhishek. You know, OK, the difference between our administrative unit, uh, you know, uh, on the difference between uh, administrative roles and our back, you know, okay. And after that, uh, you know, we'll discuss a concept of, uh, you know, uh, the subscription region resource log, you know, okay, and how to create a tag, how to apply the tag, and how to create, you know, the policies. You know? So we'll discuss these points uh, in. You know, in the second half of this session. So we'll take 10 minutes tea break, you know, and uh, we'll come back, you know, at 6 10. We'll start at 6 10. Okay. Is that okay, guys? Just give me a confirmation if it is okay. We'll wait for you know, tea break. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. Thanks, everyone.
हेलो सो आई होप यू नो एवरीबॉडी हैज बैक ओके एंड लेट्स कंटिन्यू विथ द रिमेनिंग सेशन सो सिंस वी हैव एडेड यू नो फ्यू यूजर एंड नाउ now laksh is able to log in okay so laksh can you just confirm are you using the same id same user id you know which is this user id which we have created can you just confirm this id only you are using sharing my screen yeah uh, laksh can you just confirm are you using this uh, you know id only to get into that portal.azure.com you know just to confirm everyone i think laksh is not on the seat yeah okay, okay. Uh, so he is writing same user id you know okay okay so maybe uh, after creation it might be since it is external user it might be taking some time to you know uh, sync up you know, into that external directory okay so we'll have to give some time and after some time you can try and it will work you know so in my case if i just provide my id and my password i will be also able to log in okay so now for example you know okay uh, so i want to you know uh, have one uh, a feature called as sspr feature so sspr feature uh, from the exam point of view that is also you know important feature you to you know uh, implement and you to see how to implement you know that sspr feature okay and overall the concept point of view if you are able to understand you know okay so that will be great for the you know okay exam point of view so as i said you know sspr you know is a a feature which is not available in the free uh, version of uh, you know active directory license okay for that we will have, we'll have to buy you know premium uh, we'll have to purchase a premium you know uh, either p1 or p2 once you you know okay have that you know uh, premium uh, you know feature uh, then you can you know achieve that sspr you know okay. so for sspr you know uh, so actually two steps require you know Uh, so in step one, what you can do, okay. So for example, I'm having you know four users, you know. So let's see. I'm just first trying, you know, with this user. Okay. So to log in. Okay. So I'll just go and say same portal. I'll just provide that ID. and you know if if i forgot you know the password you know so if i forgot the password then that user itself uh, will able to recover the password you know without connecting to the help desk you know so if you have you know uh, a company let's say and if the person you know forgots you know he or her user user oh, sorry his or her password you know then that person need to be connect to the it help desk you know to recover you know his or her password okay so so to you know avoid that process you know okay uh, because uh, most of the uh, it help desk people will get the query related to the password recovery only you know so to to you know uh, put less burden on the it help desk you know so user will be able to you know recover their password you know by themselves you know, 
this feature is you know available you know so this capability should be enabled you know okay and if you in case forgot the password you will be clicking on this forgot password okay and we'll have to provide the email id and we'll have to just provide this captcha information okay and if i say next so can you see this you know so this capability is not uh, you know okay that this rahul user is not having this capability okay can you see this so that self service uh, you know self service uh, you know uh, password reset is not available for this particular user you know so in order to activate you know uh, this facility to this user you know what we'll have to do so there are couple of steps we'll have to do you know so first we'll be assigning one license to this user that is uh, you know okay um, we'll be going and we'll will assign that license you know so and how will i assign that license so we'll go to the license okay all products and this is the license we are having okay, so just let's choose that license and let's assign you know one license okay to whom you are you know assigning this license you know to the user which user this is the name of the user okay so let's assign this okay so once you you know do the assignment you know okay so these are the feature will be available to you huh? okay so i want all those feature and i'll say review and create you know so after assignment you know i'll see within few seconds i'll see that user will be listed over here okay so that is you know the first step once the user is you know okay let's say it over here second step we need to go and activate and that will be a common step for everyone you know okay so we'll have to activate you know the password reset okay so let's come back to the so over here i should see password reset can you see this password reset so once you click on this password reset you know okay so for whom you know this password reset you know capability is you know uh, allowed so as of now uh, for none of the user you know password reset capability is allowed you know uh, uh, but let me tell you uh, for global administrator that uh, sspr feature is by default will be activated so you know you do not uh, need to activate uh, you know for the global administrator you know feature this feature you know exam point of view remember this you know okay so for the global administrator you know that feature capability will be you know uh, by default uh, activated for the normal user you will have to activate this feature and for the normal user we are doing this you know? so i can select a specific user or i can associate all the users so let me just do it uh, for all the user as of well. So let's save it. Okay. Once I do this, you know. Okay. Then next step, you can, you know, uh, decide authentication method. You know, you can configure that authentication method. Okay. And there are few uh, authentication method uh, available. But I observe, you know. Okay. You have to provide at least, you know, these two. You know. otherwise it will not work you know i have observed that you know okay by keeping only one mobile or only one you know email okay and i try that you know okay but uh, you know so combination of these two at least you know require and after all you know uh, we we have provided this you know we need to you know uh, provide that email id and mobile number you know in in that user's account profile profile so the user which user i am you know, modifying so this user so this user 
I'll just edit the property. I'll just modify the you know, email address and mobile number. You know? So if you click on this edit property, you know, down below, uh, you will see some option to set you know, the email address and mobile number. OK, and here you have to enter you know, the mobile number. So let me enter the mobile number. Uh, so you may, you may enter any mobile number. OK, but of course, if you want that real uh, verification, then you need to enter a correct uh, mobile number only. And I can just enter the email address. I'll just use this email address. OK, and I'll say save. OK, once I save. OK. So maybe let's give 30 seconds or one minute of a time just to sync up. OK, after we done modification, let's confirm once again, you know, that is reflecting. Yes, it is reflecting. And once it is reflected over there, you know, OK, let's try this feature of password, you know, recovery. By opening another incognito window. I'll just enter the portal.azure.com and you know I'll just hit forgot password. OK. After that, it'll ask you email ID. So this is the email ID. By default, I'll enter and I'll just enter this captcha information. OK, and once I enter that captcha information, OK. So I should see, you know, some kind of a text, you know. OK, so first you'll have to enter your mobile number. OK, but earlier this option, OK, uh, was disabled for us, you know, but this time it is asking us, uh, you know, for our mobile number. If I enter my mobile number, it will send one, you know, OK, uh, OTP on my mobile number. And once you enter that OTP, you know, your verification will be completed and after that it will allow you to reset your password. OK, so without uh, you know connecting to the you know help desk, you will be able to you know uh, access. You will be able to uh, able to recover your password. OK. I think some Somebody is asking me to add. So let me add this user. Okay, uh, so Amit, you can check. Uh, I have just added you also, a user in my ED. Okay, uh, so just confirm uh, everybody. So is that clear to you? Dhananjo is also asking to add, so let me add him also. So, or it will be good that if I add it into. Okay, so tell me the people. No. 
So I'll just add, you know, uh, like. I'll just bulk invite. I'll send bulk invite. One more person is telling Neelam. Neelam, sorry. Uh, but uh, you know, you try not to give your uh, you know company ID because uh, otherwise it will create another. Uh, you know, tenant uh, in your company ID. So, you know, uh, try not to give your company ID. You can give your personal ID. <laughs> okay. Uh <-huh. clears> so, anybody else? Uh, want their account to be created. OK, so I'll just go and save this. So I have already this user, so I'll just go and delete that record. So, so I'll add uh, one more person, Chandra Shekhar. Yeah, so I'll just close it. I'll just bulk invite. I'll just upload that file. And let me just submit. <coughs> OK, once I submit, uh, you know, I'll see all those users and, you know, for first time you may have to you know, uh, accept that invitation. Yeah, so bulk operation is completed. So I'll just close this. I'll refresh. So once I refresh, uh, I'll see all those users. So, so you you accept that invitation, and maybe after ten minutes or ten fifteen minutes, you may try this. Got it, guys. So let's move ahead. So we have seen, you know, uh, user creation. You know, on the same line, you know, uh, you will have a group creation. And I'm just, uh, just not showing that practically because it is uh, more like you know, same. So this is the way you will create a user. This is the way you will manage the user. You know, okay. So you will be able to uh, update job you will be able to update the con contact information email address 
you know mobile number you know so but one point you need to remember you know once the user is deleted you know um it will be soft delete you know okay so user information will be retained you know okay and you you will be able to get back that user information you know okay uh, for 30 days after 30 days that uh, user you know uh, won't be you know undone or user account can be, cannot be undone you know so this uh, feature is you know okay there delete user feature ha but uh, uh, you need not to remember this for the exam point of view you know uh, since it is a preview feature you know preview feature are most probably will not ask uh, you know during the examination okay so we have seen bulk account update bulk create bulk invite okay so just like that you will be able to create uh, you know okay uh, a group also and in a group i can assign you know okay uh, users which i have created just now okay so you can create uh, you know uh, assigned you know there is a membership type you know you might have a assigned you know or dynamic user just a uh yes dananjay is asking the question yes you can uh, you know uh, you can view that as your portal also you know? okay and that is the basic idea you no know? uh, you will be able to access the azure portal also and depending on what rights user is having you know user will be able to do the work you know and i'll tell you so the password is uh, your same id password id will be provided by me but the password uh, will be you no know, your same password you will be using it
Yeah, so I was saying, uh, Dhananjay, you, know, uh, you will be able to access the portal and uh, you will be able to, you know, uh, do the action, you know, depending on the rights you are having, you know, and you're correct. Uh, you will be able to create the resources and, uh, you know, all the resources will be created in my, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, subscription. Okay. How about? If I have given you a permission on my subscription, you know, then you will be able to create. You know, as of now, I have not given anybody a permission on my subscription. You know, I have added into, you know, in my uh, Active Directory. You know, so I have added in my Active Directory, uh, but I have not given, uh, you know, uh, any permission to these users. Okay. Uh, Gopinath, uh, I'll be adding you, you know, uh, uh, in my subscription. Maybe post my session, you know, uh, because it is uh, taking time. No, so let us continue. You know, so just like that, uh, you know, you are having a user creation. You know, you are having a group creation. Okay. Uh, and there is some concept called as you know administrative units you know and uh, you, know, uh, you need to remember this uh, exam point of view also you know? so so administrative units you know so azure ad premium p1 or p2 for each privilege role you know or administrator you know global administrator so whatever be the you know uh, your license having p1 or p2 you know so these option will be visible to you okay so <clears throat> what is administrative unit so just now you have created few set of users okay here i have created few set of user you know okay so um, maybe uh, my company is having you know a uh, branches at different cities like for example mumbai you know uh, pune delhi you know okay and every city is having a local admin you know okay maybe their uh, branch office admin you know and one you know branch office address uh, branch office admin you know cannot be uh, control the users present inside another branch so for example <coughs> you have a few users in the mumbai branch you know so that mumbai branch one specific admin will be you know allocated and you know that we can do you know into the administrative unit you know so let me just explain that concept uh, because once you visualize this concept, no, then you will be you know, able to understand. So, for example, you are having you know uh, various offices, you know. So one is uh, you know Mumbai office, one is Delhi office, one is Pune office. You know, there is uh, you know one global administrator. So global administrator, of course, can do uh, you know oh, any administrating. Uh, activity related to office a office b or office c you know okay but you do not want to give that burden to the global administrator you know okay because uh, that global administrator is a single person okay so who cannot manage all the you know users so if your you know company is uh, growing so that is not possible for one particular person to you know uh, manage uh, entire you know uh, workload together you know so for that reason Okay, what you can do, you can as a global administrator, I can create one administrative unit for office A, which is for Mumbai office. Another administrative unit for office B, which is for maybe let's say a Delhi office. Okay, and another administrative unit, you know, okay, uh, maybe for Pune office. Okay, and 
so whatever be the employees who are working in the mumbai office you know so all those employees you know will be added to this you know okay administrative unit you know so this is administrative unit so i will add these four user into this administrative unit you know so i will add these four user into this administrative unit you know and i'll add these four user into this administrative unit you know so there will be you know some admin so this admin you know will able to you know do any kind of administration related to these four users okay but this admin cannot do that administration related to these users okay so administrative unit means what you know okay i am assigning the administrative privilege to a smaller unit rather than you know allowing you know okay that permission at the global administrator level or rather than creating a multiple global administrator you know that can be always dangerous you know to create multiple global administrator because that is you know you are giving entire access to your you know uh, active directory so rather than doing that you want to create a small group you know and for that group you want to assign some uh, you know admin okay so that you know kind of a activity you can perform in the you know administrative unit you know so for example uh, let's say you know if you if you look at this example okay uh, so let's say there is a global administrator so you know so i am acting as my account is acting as a global administrator because you know uh, that is the owner of the account so for example you know i am acting as a global administrator you know so there is one administrative unit you know uh, so this is the administrative unit created by the global administrator okay and there is one specific user you know okay who is acting as a admin for this administrator unit administrative unit you know so in this administrative unit i am having user a1 user a2 and this group okay so as a user administrator of this administrative unit you know so we will be able to add we will be able to remove in this you know administrative unit will be able to add user delete user you know okay edit the properties of these user you know since it is present inside this administrative unit you know but i can't you know uh, you know specify the properties or edit the properties of this user because this user is not a part of this administrative unit you know but i'll be able to do that modify the properties of this user and this user you know i won't be able to do that uh, you know edit the properties of these user why because they are not directly added into this administrative unit okay i have added a group and inside that group you are having you know these two users you know so you will be able to control this group but you won't be able to control the you know properties of these you know users which are present inside this group you will be able to you know decide you know who will be the part of this group you will be able to add some people you will be able to remove some people from this group you know as a user administrator you know but you can't you know modify the properties of these users since it is not directly added into the administrative unit okay and of course i can't do modification you know in this in in this user because this is not a part of the administrative unit
a uh, kumar is asking do we need to create domain for that no no this is not require a domain it is all machine into same domain then you uh, i believe you are asking about the administrative unit you know so for accessing the administrative unit you do not require a domain okay so once i you know create a tenant you know okay so i will just as you know uh, allocate some kind of uh, you know uh, company name okay uh, that will ultimately will have you know some kind of a domain okay and once we have that you know okay only thing we require a you know active directory license premium p1 p2 license p1 or p2 license okay once we have that you know uh, premium license this administrative unit you know will be available this facility will be available you know okay so you can see here if you come back over here in the ad active directory section and if you see you know this administrative unit you know you will see this option administrative unit can you see okay so from here will be able to add the administrative unit okay and inside that i will be able to add you know okay some of the users okay understood this uh, so let me just uh, quickly show you this because you uh, know okay So I have a ready-made uh, demo for this. So I'll just take the domain name. So I'm. I'm having this domain name over here, no? So it is smart. So I'll just go and create these user. So I'll just go and create. Okay, so I'm just um, creating these users so that I can, you know, uh, identify which user. I've added or not. So we can see. So let me just go and add another. This time it is not going to be a bulk invite. This time it is going to be a bulk create. And let me choose this file. Okay, and let me submit. So after a you know moment, you will see you know uh, there are users seven to eight users will be created. Okay, and as per this diagram, you know okay. we will create one administrative unit for office a okay and we will add you know these two users into this administrative unit okay so as a admin a you know okay i will be able to control you know 
this administrator so as a admin a is a user administrator so uh, uh, you will be able to add the user you will be able to remove a user you will be able to modify the you know user uh, you know properties okay but which are the user you will be able to control only uh, which are present in the administrative unit office a whichever be the users outside that office a administrative unit you won't be able to control those properties okay so this has been completed now i think so let me just refresh can you see this uh, these users has already created okay and if i now go and you know come back over here okay and if i come to the administrative unit over here you know you have to click on this administrative unit Okay, you have to give this name. Okay, and so I'll, let me just go and you know assign one role, you know, and these are the administrative role, you know, which are related to the you know administrative uh, you know Azure AD, you know, administrative AD roles. So from that, you know, I will give this user administrative role, and who will be acting as a user administrator? You know, so I will say admin A will be acting as a user administrator. Okay, and say create. So once this, you know, administrative unit is created, you can go inside this. Okay. You can see, you know, there is a, you know, one user is added as an admin, so that admin A is the administrator of this group, and in this group, I I can just go and add user A1 and user A2. These two users I will add. Okay, so as a, you know, um. Um, admin A, you know, since admin A is an administrative, a user administrator of this particular group, admin A will be able to control the properties of these user, you know. But uh, that admin A unable to, you know, control the properties of uh, user B1 and user B2. Okay, so let's try out that. Okay, and I'll come back to that uh, user section to get that ID of a admin admin A. So let's take this ID. Okay, and just log in. First time we'll have to change the password. Because we are logging for the first time. Okay, so once you sign in to the portal, it will ask you to enter your uh, you know, uh, mobile number, but uh, I'll skip this as of now. <clears throat> you know, so you'll be able to log into this you know, uh, Azure portal. And if you just go and you know, look at Active Directory, so you'll be able to see all these users will be present you know, 
you will be able to see okay but as a admin you know admin of administrative unit you know so you will be able to modify the properties of user a1 so let's say i'll click on this user a1 you know and can you see i'll get the option of edit the property of user a1 since uh, this user is present inside administrative unit you know so i will be able to you know edit some of the properties you know some of the you know uh, information okay but is a b if i just go back and just find out user b1 uh, which is not part of that administrative unit you know okay so can you see you know, this option edit option is enabled you know disabled over here okay since this user is a user administrator of office a administrative unit so whichever be the user are part of that office a administrative unit you know this user will able to control you know those user but whichever be the you know users which are outside that administrative unit you know uh, for those you know this is not the person who is uh, you know responsible for controlling you know those users okay so as a global administrator you know global administrator can do that you know task or you can create you know another administrative unit and you may assign okay another user administrator okay is that clear to you you are understanding what uh, you know what is happening i think dhananjay is asking some question you know so some user are guest and some user are member you know so a guest user are the external user and the member are the one which we create internally okay that is only uh, the difference so i hope uh, you know this point is clear to you hello am i audible to you just give me a confirmation for some umesh is saying i am not audible yeah umesh you need to rejoin Yeah, thank you, guys. Kumar R is asking, how can we give permission to user one to change? for rest of the user you know so you can assign you know if you want to do that you know so for example uh, i'm just picking uh, one user okay so maybe this user okay okay so i'm just picking this user you know okay and this user you know okay you can add that user you know a permission on your active directory you know so let me talk about that active directory roles you know so azure active directory roles okay so can you see this option you know okay roles and administrator okay so if you just go and click on this roles and administrator you will get you know the list of roles which are you know available on uh, 
you know okay azure ad you know so i am the global administrator so i will be able to do everything you know in this in this account you know okay so there is some users you know okay some permission called as user administrator you know so you will see the description you know okay uh, so user administrator can be able to do you know this thing. okay so we can manage all aspect of users and the group including resetting the password you know so if you give this permission to any one of these user you know okay so that user will be able to do okay will be able to you know modify any aspect of the user you know so for example i am assigning you know uh, maybe okay so maybe i'm i'm assigning lux you know okay so lux as a you know uh, user administrator i'm just assigning okay so can you see this assigned role okay so this assigned role is for you know administrative role okay so you have to click on this assigned role okay and once you will be able to see there is a option called as add assignment okay so you have to click on this add assignment okay and here what kind of a permission you want to assign so let me assign user administrator permission okay so let's see i'm adding that user administrator permission you no know? so once that permission is added now lux you will be also able to create the user in this active directory you know? because i have given you that capability okay but once i remove this permission you know okay once i remove this permission okay you won't you know you won't be able to do that okay so can you just uh, lux can you just try to create one you know user and uh, can you just uh, verify are you able to create the user new user or not okay uh, so kumar is that answer your query anand is asking please assign me some role to my user okay uh, so dhananjay you know i will also add you also as a user administrator so you will also see you know so see i have just adding you as a user administrator so add assignment and over here i'll just go and say user administrator okay but look at this i have assigned only the permission on the ad you are not having a permission on my subscription okay so once you you know assign this permission you are assigning that permission on the azure active directory not on the subscription okay now um, uh, dhananjay you also be you know will be able to uh, do some kind of a, you know a user management okay but i am going to keep this uh, you know for the limited time you know okay so i will re revoke it uh, ultimately okay guys uh, so is that clear to you just wait for your response
Okay, so Lux has created some users. So let me see. Okay, okay. Hareka. So, so sweet of you. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this user has created, uh, you know, uh, by Laksh. Okay, so let's move ahead. So once you do this, you know, okay. So now we have a, assigned what, uh, you know, the permission on active directory. You know? so what I've done, I've added a permission to the active directory. Okay, now, uh, you know, after some time, you know, I, I will just assign few permission on my subscription also, you know, so that you will be also able to create, you know, some of the, you know, resources. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, move ahead and let's discuss these things first. Okay. So what is, uh, you know, uh, Azure region, you know? You know, region is a you know, uh, physical area. Okay, region is the, you know, physical area, uh, which is <clears throat> located in the, you know, um, uh, in the some part of a world. Okay, so it's a, you know, a physical geographical area, which is located at, you know, some part of a world. So there are almost, now, uh, 60 plus regions, uh, as per the official documentation of uh, Azure, you know, there are 60 plus region available inside, uh, you know, in a, in a entire world, you know, across uh, 140, you know, countries, you know, uh, it is there. Okay. So, what is region? So, in a region, you know, I can go and, you know, um, uh, I can have, or uh, that Microsoft is already having, you know, the one or more data centers, you know. So data center is a place, you know, okay, is a, you know, a, a physical premises, physical building, you know. So where, uh, you know, your Microsoft manages uh, entire, uh, you know, power cooling you know okay of that particular infrastructure you know so microsoft manages you know okay the the physical data center and physical data center uh maybe a collection of a data center maybe uh maybe a combination of uh, two or three data center can be you know uh, we can say it as one region so in a region there may be Okay, might be you know multiple data centers might be present. Okay, that might be possible. On and in a data center, I may go and create a individual resource. So whatever resource I want to create, for example, I want to create a virtual machine, I want to create an app service, I want to create a database. So I can create those resources inside a data center. Okay, but uh, you know, that data center, you know, which data center you will be creating, that will be decided by the Microsoft. You, you while creating the resource, you'll have to choose what? The region, you know, so you have to choose only the region. Okay, so that internally it will manage where to create that actually resource in that region. You know? So region is, you know, a simple word. It's a geographical area, you know, where, I may have one or many data centers. Okay, and what is data center? Data center is a one physical you know, infrastructure. 
you know okay which you might be having inside one building okay then you need to have a subscription you know okay so in order to create the resources like you know uh, virtual machine app service function app database okay that may be a sql database cosmos database you know so for that you need to have the subscription you know so without having a subscription you won't be able to create the resources you know so as of now if you try you know to access a virtual machine you know can you just try all the people who have activated their account you know okay so can you just try to create a virtual machine you know so if i just say virtual machine i won't be able to create that virtual machine why because i do not have a subscription attached to this uh, you know uh, account Uh, just to me one minute huh? i'll just come back in one minute please Okay, uh, so I have to have, you know, um, so I have to have a subscription in order to create the resources. Okay, so as of now, if you just look at, uh, you know, in my case, I am just having my subscription attached to my primary uh, directory. And in my primary directory, if I just go and click on, you know, virtual machine, you know, so over there I will be able to create the virtual machine. So until and unless, you know, I am having a subscription attached to my tenant, okay, you won't be able to create the resources, okay. And once you are attach the subscription, okay. As a you know administrator, you know uh, um, as a administrator of this particular account, I will be able to create the resources. But as a member of the account, you won't have a rights. You know all these users don't have a rights on my subscription. You know, so I need to provide those rights. You know, okay, so that you will be also able to create some resources inside my you know subscription. Okay, so I hope uh, you know this point is clear to you. Okay, so let's cover this you know, slides, and after that I'll come back and discuss practically. Okay, so you can create. You can create uh, you know the subscription. Okay. So you can create a subscription free subscription. So where you are 
you are having, you know, okay. Um, you know, you will get uh, $200 of credit, you know, but that credit you will be able to use it only for 30 days. Okay. Okay. And one thing you'll have to, you know, uh, while registering, you'll have to provide, uh, you know, your credit card detail. Okay. Just to verify your identity. That's it. Okay. Uh, that will initially charge you two rupees, but that two rupees will also will be credited to you once that verification process is completed. Okay. And it will not, Azure will not charge you, you know, until and unless you upgrade your account, you know, to pay as you go. Okay. So once you upgrade, you know, your account as pay as you go, then, you know, okay, your, you know, uh, billing will happen. Okay. So you have to have one subscription. Okay. And you know, so there are several ways to obtain the subscription. Okay. So one way is to get it free right away. Okay. So another way, in my case, I'm getting a subscription, you know, uh, from Microsoft as a part of, as a benefit of a MC, Microsoft certified trainer. Okay. Okay. Then what is resource group? A resource group is a, you know, um, uh, uh, which represents you know multiple resources okay uh, maybe i can keep multiple resources together i can logically group multiple resources together in the form of one resource group okay i can keep multiple resources together you know so whatever be my logical you know um, you know resource creation Okay, so I will be creating all those uh, you know related resources inside one uh, you know uh, resource group. Okay, got it, huh? So you can define you know uh, the the quota you know. For example, if you are creating one resource group, you know, okay, in that resource group, uh, you know, okay, how many, you know, CPU you will be, you know, uh, able to allocate, you know, okay, how many resources you will be able to create in one particular region, you know, so that, you know, you can assign the quota, you know, okay, to, to avoid your unnecessary billing. You know, okay. So that administrator, you know, can do, you know, to avoid unnecessary uh, billing. So, so for example, you are working in a development environment where you, where you do not want to create some type of, uh, you know, expensive resources. Okay. So you want to, you know, um, restrict your user to, to be not able to create those expensive resources. So for example, uh, one of the expensive resource is, uh, you know, uh, which I know, uh, which is Spring App Service, which is uh, going to cost you around, uh, you know, uh, minimum 15,000 rupees, you know, per month. You know? Okay. So if you want, you know, your user to not create that resource, you know, that service, you can provide that, uh, you know, okay, uh, restriction in this particular section. Okay. Usage and quota. Okay, so this is going to be helpful, you know, for you. Okay, from exam point of view, this uh, diagram need to be understand very properly, you know. Okay, so this relationship need to be, you know, understand. So you will have one, you know, root management group. You know, so there is only one root management group will be there. Under a root management group. You can create, you know, several management group, you know, 
and every management group you know okay i can create maybe a tenant okay so every management group is associated with the active directory okay and uh, if i just go and create you know um a tenant or a company you know my company is you can visualize over here you know your company is going to uh, you know uh, separate it over here okay and your tenant will have you know your directory will have a subscription you know so like this to understand this so management group root management group will have a management group okay management group can have a subscription subscription can have a resource group resource group can contain a resources okay so that uh, you know hierarchy you should you know remember okay and if i just come back to the directory and if i just go to the subscription so this is visual studio subscription i'm having and if i click on my subscription you know very first thing i want to what uh, you know uh, move my subscription so currently my subscription is attached to uh, my primary directory if i want to see that you know let me just go to to root so management group okay so can you see this you know management group okay you know tenant root you know group and this is the my root you know management group and root management group is having you know this subscription you know okay and now if you go inside this subscription and this subscription is attached to my primary directory okay so whatever be the users are present inside this primary directory will able to you know utilize my subscription you know so now i want you know to give that capability to my newly created company you know because i can assign a subscription to one directory only remember that exam point of view very important you can assign you know um, one subscription you can attach one subscription to one directory only you know you can't attach you know it to a multiple directory you know so i'll just click on this change directory okay and i'll get okay the names of the directory okay so smartcom is the newly created directory so i'll just change that directory okay and it will take maybe 2 to 3 minutes to you know uh, reflect that changes okay and directory has been changed you know now if you just come back you know and switch your primary you know directory and if you just switch back to the you know this sorry not this you switch back to the smartcom okay over here you should be able to use your subscription but uh, okay uh, you may have to give some time okay can you see if this is you know showing you that means your resources are locked you know you may have to just refresh hard refresh couple of time if it is not happening then you will have to just log out once and log in so i'm just logging out i'll just clear the cache memory from browser at first time it is going to ask me verification and i'll just log in once again by using my primary id
So can you see now? You have to switch your current account is uh, sorry. Uh, your current directory is smart com. You know, which we have created and can you see over here? You know, you are having access. So you will be able to create, you know, OK, virtual machine. OK. OK, so you will be able to create different resources which are available. But if you try this, you know, you still not have access. OK, and if I want you to give uh, access on my subscription, you know, so that you will be also able to create some resources, you know, OK, so then. OK, we'll have to open a subscription. OK, and. I have to go inside the subscription. OK, and from the subscription. OK, there is something called as you know. Access control I A M. OK. Uh, which is stands for identity and access management. OK, I M. So which is uh, you know, so now uh, Abhishek uh, your question I'm trying to answer. So I A M which is you know uh, specific to the you know um, you're controlling the access on specific resource. You know. So which is comes under rollback uh, sorry uh, which is comes under R back. You know. So you're trying to give access on my you know visual studio enterprise subscription you know okay so i am trying to add access on my this resource okay so i'm i will just go and click on this okay so when i just go and provide the r back access so then uh, you will be able to create the resources okay you will be able to modify that resource OK, so if you are providing, you know, the you know R back on that, you know, OK. Uh, uh, but if you are having only the, you know, uh, permission on, you know, uh, uh, active directory, you won't be able to create, you know, any kind of a resources, you know, and this uh, differentiation also you should be remember, in, uh, you know, from the exam point of view, it is very important, you know, so. For example, I am the global administrator. You know, OK, so let's say I'll, I'll take this example. I'll just take a moment to explain this example. OK. OK, so I am the global administrator of this account. You know, OK. And. So let's say I have assigned, you know, OK, uh, permission. You know, maybe uh, maybe this person. OK, so I have assigned global administrator permission on to this user, you know, so. As a global administrator, I am assigning the permission on what? I'm assigning the permission on my active directory. You know, that means this user will be able to create the resources in my subscription. No. You know, despite of this user is a global administrator, no, he still not be able to create the resources inside my subscription. You know, so inside my subscription, you know, if I if I have if I have given only the R back, you know, identity and access management, you know, the permission on my subscription, then this user will be able to modify something. Okay, so as a global administrator, you know, okay, he will be, you know, the authorized to do anything on the Active Directory, you know, but he will be unable to do anything inside my subscription. I hope this point is clear to you. You know, exam point of view, you know, important point.
So now who have I'm just logged in. Yeah, so let's say I've logged in as an admin, you know. So let's say I'll come over here. I'll just say search for virtual machine, you know. Okay. So you know admin A is also unable to create a virtual machine because this admin A is a user administrator, but I have not given the permission on my subscription. Okay, so when this user will be able to access the permission, also will be able to you know create the virtual machine or any kind of a resource for that matter, you know, when you will give a specific permission. So let me now give you know permission on my subscription. I'll come back. I'll go to the subscription. I'll click on my subscription. Okay, there is an option called as access control. Okay, which is related to the R back, which is related to the resource level permission. You know, so I'll click on this access control. You know, I'll click on add. You know, so you can see uh, your access. Okay, currently I am the global administrator. I'll say add. Okay, add role assignment. Okay, and we can add, you know, role assignment. So these are the role we can assign, you know. Okay, so for the exam point of view, you should remember what is owner role, contributor role, reader role, and maybe access, uh, security access, security uh, admin, you know, related. Only these, uh, you know, okay, four to five roles you need to remember you know uh, as an exam point of view okay so uh, if we just go and provide a contributor you know access on my you know, so admin a i'm giving contributor access contributor means what you know um, so contributor will be able to you know uh, create any resource delete any resource you know uh, but um, that contributor is not uh, you know able to assign the permission further you know but if you just go and assign the owner you know roles owner permission you know okay then whatever be the permission contributor is having all those permission you know contribute uh, all those permission uh, the owner will also have you know okay but along with that you know uh, so owner will be also able to you know transfer that rights to the some other you know uh, users okay so i'll come come back so i'll click on access control i'll click on add Add role assignment. You know what role I want to assign. I want to assign contributor role. You know, okay. Say whom I have to assign this role. Select that user. I want to assign for admin A. Okay, and then say, okay, review and create. Okay, so once you review and create, okay, so it will take some time. Okay, so maybe give uh, maybe half half a minute or you know one minute of time. Okay, once we provide the access, you can come back over here. Okay, and you can try and refresh. So here you'll be able to see now this admin user will be also able to you know uh, create you know, this uh, user. Okay. So it is better to you know uh, re-login. You know you log out and log in once again. You know? Okay. So if you are experiencing any kind of uh, this error. Okay. But 
from here now as a admin a i will be also able to create you know okay the virtual machine why because i have added a contributor permission on my subscription okay so is that clear to you you know so you'll be able to create you know uh, any kind of a storage account okay you'll be able to create uh, any kind of a app service okay since i have added a contributor permission so that contributor will be able to you know add or remove the resources but as a contributor i cannot assign you know that permission on the subscription to some other user you know okay so let me just assign now uh, maybe a reader permission on my subscription maybe i'll just add role assignment i'll just add a reader permission so you will be able to see what all there what all the resources present in my you know okay subscription so usually reader permission will be given okay and i'll just go and select the member maybe i'll select lux okay and i'll select uh, this person tananja you know and i'll say select okay and i'll say review and create you know, so it will take you know, maybe some time okay after some time you can refresh you know your portal then you will be able to see at least you know what all resources are present you know okay inside you know subscription okay getting it guys is that clear to you yeah thanks thanks satish okay so let us uh, move ahead you know and let's see you know so as a part of uh, you know uh, azure governance you know we can apply the tag you know you know and if you look at tags are very very simple you know in in first place you know it looks very simple okay but they are very uh, you know powerful okay so so as a you know part of a habit you know i i should say you, know, you should keep a habit of uh, you know organizing your work you know so organizing your work you know how can we organize you know our work in the azure so one way of organizing our resources inside the azure is by creating a resource group you know okay so maybe i may create a separate resource group for a maybe um, okay a a dev environment i may create a separate resources for a prod environment you know or i may create separate resources based on you know uh, my department you know maybe a training department development department testing department i may create a you know separate uh, you know uh, resource group you know okay so 
so if you go ahead you know the another way to organize your work by providing you know the tax you know so it will help us to organize our work properly you know so for example if you just go and you know create any kind of a resource you know and you have to just provide you know a tag okay so i'll just go and you know uh, create one you know so as a admin a so i'll just go and show you you know we can also create a virtual machine you know so there is one virtual machine which is created by me as a global administrator so i'll just go and create okay i'll put it inside resource group by the way you can create that resource group from here also okay so you can select the virtual machine okay you can define you know uh, in which region you want to place that virtual machine okay what is the you know um, operating system you will be picking so you have to you know put that thing so i'll just put uh, maybe let me pick uh, windows 22 data center i'll just put what uh, you put my password okay very well discuss you know uh, the part of this creating a virtual machine you know when we discuss about that you know more section compute uh, section no? okay so as of now i'll just go and create the virtual machine very quickly and this is the option you know okay so this is tag you know so you have to just go and create this tag you know okay so so who has created this virtual machine you know okay so maybe admin a has created this virtual machine okay so if you just go and create this virtual machine you know so tag is just a name value pair you know okay it looks very simple okay but which is very very popular or very powerful not popular very powerful you know so you can see you know um, uh, you can organize your you know work by using the tag okay you can analyze the cost you know uh, maybe uh, you know uh, how much uh, you know money spent you know out of my total you know money spent how much money spent uh, you know the resources which are used in, uh, used by the training department the resources which are used by the you know uh, development department resources which are used by the testing department so you can keep a track of all that thing you know by applying a tag Okay, uh, so we can see uh, my resource is created, my virtual machine is created. Okay, so you can check, you know.
so there is a separate resource called as tag okay so you can check you know okay and there are two tags so earlier i have applied you know this tag user makran you know and this time i have applied a new tag user and the value is uh, you know admin you know so in this you know how many resources you know have you know admin has created how many resources has you know makran has created you know? so that you will be able to track if you are able to you know uh, you know give this uh, you know uh, tax on the you know every particular resource you know so giving a tag is good habit you know is part of a governance you know so okay so it's one of the you know uh, good practice you know i would say and and if you just look at uh, you know if you if you look at one section is there called as cost management okay so if you just access that cost management section okay okay so cost analysis and so how how much you know money you have spent okay by now you know so this report will show you, you know, that information so that how much money you have spent and what is the forecast you know if you go you know with this run rate you know what is your forecast you know what is the you know um, ultimately you will land up uh, you know spending the money you know if you go by this run rate you know okay so how much money you can spend so you know, so this is the forecast amount okay and this is my you know actual cost till now you know okay and if i just go and you know uh, okay so over here i can just go and click on a you know add filter you know and i can apply this tag okay and we can just apply you know the tag over here so that tag is not available but you will see very soon you know that tag will be present over here so you can you know um organize and you can see how many you know um uh, how much rupees has been consumed by the resources which is created by the makran how much resources which is uh, you know consumed by the you know uh, prod department or marketing department or sales department okay? you will be able to see this over here ha uh, but uh, you will have to keep keep in mind this you know cost management will not reflect immediately so you will have to give some time maybe uh, you know okay a 6 hour or 12 hour of a time to to be reflect you know uh, your resource over here okay so if you create a resource immediately that resource won't be you know build you know? okay okay so resource billing will be you know uh, based on minute to minute based on you know hourly basis you know okay so you will have to just wait for that you know amount of time and you know once it is reflected you will be able to see that report, you know? okay but if you come over here okay you will be able to you know uh, decide your billing cycle also this is my default is current billing cycle so 22 is my billing cycle you know but if i just want to see my you know, uh, maybe last quarter yeah this quarter you know so if i just look at you know this quarter report you know so if i you know i'll be able to see it this way okay so this is the area chart you know but if you want this area chart to be changed to you know some some kind of a you know line chart or you know pie chart kind of a thing you'll be able to you know see that thing also
getting it. So if I go and you know click on this daily, okay, we can observe that. You know, so we can observe that. You know, daily how much you are spending. You know, okay. So there is one specific day. You know, okay, where I've spent. You know, land up spending six thousand. You know, uh, or almost six thousand seven hundred rupees in one single day. You know, so this is tenth uh, of January. Okay, eleventh of January. I have just spent uh, around three thousand rupees. Okay, but uh, if you look at you know rest all. You know, okay, this. The common normal spent money. Okay. So you can analyze your you know uh, cost, you know your spending, your, your your money, where your money has gone. You know you can analyze that. You know so you can see you know that uh, report. Okay, based on the services also. So most of the money I have spent in the automation. Okay. Then after that, uh, you know, storage, you know. Then after that, backup, virtual machine, you know. So how much money I have spent, you know, overall in this billing cycle, in this quarter. So I'll be able to get that, you know. And in this screen only, you will see the option to set, you know, the budget. So if you set a budget. OK. So for example, uh, if I'm adding a budget. OK. And. Uh, we'll have to specify the unique name. Okay, you can decide, uh, no? okay, uh, the current billing cycle. Okay, so creation date is um, this month only February. Okay, and expiration date is by default it is this, but uh, you can control that also. Okay, and what is your you know uh, budget amount? So we can decide that budget amount, okay, and we can set that budget amount. You no, know? okay. so maybe I'm getting ten thousand uh, rupees per month. You no, know? okay. So when your spending reach maybe around eight thousand rupees, you know, okay, it should show me. You know, uh, okay, it should show me some kind of a alert. You know, and that alert also I can send. Over here, I can set what budget. I think ten thousand rupees is a budget. Okay, and in the alert section, I can decide. You know, on the actual. Okay. If maybe eighty percent of actual is spent, you know, then I have to send one particular. You know, uh, you know uh, maybe I have to perform some kind of action. So I can you know, send the email. OK, so whom I can send the email. OK, when this particular condition reaches, you know, OK, you can decide that. OK, and we can create. Um, this budget. 